<clears throat> Hello everyone, good evening uh, to those who are listening and to those who are viewing at the comfort of our homes. Good evening everyone. So today we are in another series of Vibal Publishing House uh, entitled uh, From the Classroom to the Living Room. So this evening I will be sharing with you on how we rethink parental involvement in the new normal. By the way, I am Mr. Paul Raymark and Salsag. I'm currently connected with Colegio San Agustin Bacolod. So I am currently here in Bacolod City. So shout out to my colleagues in uh, Colegio San Agustin Bacolod, most especially to our principal, who is also one of the resource speakers of Vibal Publishing House, Ms. Donna Beneticla, and to the rest of the faculty and non-teaching staff of Colegio San Agustin Bacolod. So this uh, topic that I am going to share with you is primarily for the parents, but also it's good that some teachers will be listening in order for you also to glean some tips and hints on how can we communicate effectively with our parents, most especially in this era of disruption that we are experiencing in the different educational institutions. The family do have a lot of concerns, most especially now in times of our, in the time where we will transition, in the time that we will transition in the new normal. So uh, like for example, the mixing of the online and offline classes, the live and the non-live classes are some of the things that our parents are asking us. For example, how about assessment, how about the grades? How about the lack of learning structure? So we will be talking about it one by one also on how can we address it as teachers and also in the side of the educational institution on how can we help parents also in resolving these issues as we continue education, as we continue learning. We are now on an era that education was disrupted in the UNESCO Global Monitoring of School Closures caused by this COVID-19 pandemic, in the data, in the statistics for the Philippines, that there is a total of 28,451,212 affected learners due to school closures caused by COVID-19. I would like to share a scenario that we've started for the last three months or more that we are in chaos. That's why most of us are asking, paano na ba ito? What will happen now? That if we try to, to if we try to look the picture that we are in a country where our students are inside the classroom, last academic year, all of them are inside the classroom. They are happy to be with the teachers. They are happy to be in school. But now we are in a situation or in a reality that our classrooms don't have students that we don't have students already in our classrooms. So, paano na ba ito? And after that, after this chaos, we've met a lot of words. We've met a lot of concepts. We've met a lot of ideas. So, we have this concept of flexible learning. We have this concept of distance learning. We have this concept of blended learning, hybrid modules, and learning packets. But if you try to take a look, these, uh, this blended learning, flexible learning, distance learning are already existing, has existed for how many years already? But we did not give our attention, we did not give our attention fully to these concepts, to these things in the education. In education, in education, simply because that we did not see the relevance. We did not see the relevance. But we are in a scenario now, we are in a situation that we are caught off guard and all of us are unprepared. That all of us were unprepared on how can we go about this, on how can we face this COVID-19 pandemic. And after that, if we try to think about, because most of us are just enumerating, we're fond of enumerating all of the disadvantages that this COVID-19 has brought us. It's also good to ask, what are the advantages of COVID-19? What are the advantages of this pandemic for us educators? Maybe it's good also that 
uh, this blended learning was fully implemented. This distance learning was fully implemented on the lighter side, if we try to look at it on a lighter side. But also, it's good that we have this concept of nagkalapit. That because of this distance learning, because of the lockdown maybe, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, that we've become close to each other. And later on, that our parents will be close, that us parents will be close to our kids. So nagkalapit. Let's try to think about this concept of parent and school partnership. That this parent and school partnership was intensified because of this pandemic. That school leaders, teachers need to try his or her best to partner with the parents intensively now, which is very important now as we transition in the new normal. The home is the new school. That given that there will be no face-to-face -face classes whenever that there is a vaccine already, the home is the new school, the home in which the students will continue to learn, where education will continue. But also inside the home is a family, and the leader of the family is the parents, and the parents that we consider as the learning partner. But also be careful, my dear parents, with the concept of the learning partner, because there is a lot of misconceptions of this concept of the learning partner. Many of the parents are telling us that, for example, as a teacher, that, may, that I will be a teacher inside our home. I will be a teacher with, uh, to my kids. So given, for example, if I have junior high school students, I will teach them algebra. I will study algebra again. So it's not all about that, my dear parents. That It doesn't mean that as learning partners, your role is to give content. But also one of your roles as learning partners is to provide to provide routine to our kids inside the home. It's also good that we provide discipline, how to block schedules that they have their online classes, and also on how to provide them proper mindset that even though that they are at home, they will continue to learn. That even though they are at home, they are still in school remotely. So the parent as learning partner. Let's try to talk about learning from home. Learning from home is a drastic shift in the educational landscape that we don't have any choice, but we need to go back to the concept of Maslow before Bloom, which means that we need first to we need first to we need first to talk about the well-being of our kids. We need first to secure the well-being and the safety of our kids before the cognitive development. The cognitive development need to continue also, but we need to secure first the well-being and safety of our kids. Also, some of our parents is telling, some of the parents are also telling me or some of the, for some of the conferences that I am into, that it is a burden to some of the parents. That for me, it's an innovative move to not only a new normal, but to be into a better normal in a reasonable price. Like, for example, I have encountered these parents that, for example, we parents are not teachers. Yan yung sinabi niya. That we parents are not teachers. How can we teach science, math, and Filipino? That's why we are paying the school. And should we get tutors? Or there are some parents who are telling me or telling some of the educational leaders that I've met that why pay tuition if we can get free online class? Classes. We'll just go to homeschool. But also, we need to think about also of the different expenses that the schools have gone through, that, that school need to prepare, that school need to prepare in this drastic shift of educational landscape. That even though we will be offering online classes, but the school need to equip its teachers, we need to upgrade the technological, the, also the, and the technological readiness of the school in order for us to deliver still quality education, even though we are in a remote learning context. In this session, I would like to share with you three things. And these three things, I hope that it will help you. I hope that these three things will enlighten you as we go along, as we transition in this new normal. The first is, of course, we need to know first the defining characteristics of a Gen Z learner. That our kids now inside our home our kids in our respective houses are all Gen Z learners. Another thing is that we need also to be 
we need also to recognize the different new normal learning modalities that the different schools, that the, the different educational institutions is offering. And lastly, I would like to offer some parenting tips in the new normal that I hope it would greatly help as we continue the education in the era of disruption. First, let's talk about the Gen Z learner, our kids, the students that will go to school, that will go to school this coming August. The first characteristic of a Gen Z learner is that they like to be in control, that they want always to be in control. Like, for example, the usage of laptops, the usage of gadgets, they want always to be in control, that they want always that they are the driver of the different things that they are doing, and they don't want that other will include them. So that's the first characteristic of a Gen Z learner, that they want to be in control. That's why psychological studies and some of the students that they are telling me that they don't want that their parents will be beside them during the online classes. Kasi sabi nila, baka yung parent namin, we have online classes, and then nasa tabi din, na, nasa, nasa tabi din kami nila. And also, if you try to remember, there are memes or pictures in the Facebook that uh, the student or the kid or a teenager is having an online class and then the parent is there beside him or her and uh, preparing for something in order for this kid not to discontinue the online classes. The first thing is that they like to be in control. But also as parents, we need to give them also, we need also to teach them the sense of responsibility as well as the sense of independence that they are having. But of course, we need not to forget that before that independent will come in, you need to provide proper mindset and proper routine activities before that the kid could already automatize this concept of new normal inside our home. The second characteristic of a Gen Z learner is that they would always, uh, they would always like to be given a choice. That they want always to have a choice. That for example, what do you want? Learning packets or online learning? What do you want? They would always like to be given a choice, even in school, that they would always want to be given a choice. For example, what do you want? Uh, do you want to submit this on Friday? Do you want this to submit on Sunday? Or do you want this to be submitted on Monday? So that's why the teacher will come in and then we'll meet halfway for the students, as well as to our parents also. They like also to be given a choice that, okay, you go to school, you will go to school, but also we need also to give also the wants of our kids, their needs also later on. So they would always like and to be given a choice. Number three, one of the uh, dilemmas, one of the problems of the teenagers now is that they are group and social oriented. Sabi nga nila, ano ang hinahanap mo ngayon? Given that you will be now into online learning, what is that that you will that you miss? What is that that you miss? Sabi nga nila that the kids, the teenagers, the students is telling me that one thing that I miss is the company of my friends in school. The company of my friends in school, given the reality that we are homo socios, that we are all social beings, so much more that these Gen Z learners, they are group and social oriented. So that's why we need also to devise strategies as teachers, for those teachers who are listening, to devise strategies that promotes collaboration online, even though that they are all independently learning in their respective houses. We need to devise also techniques and strategies that they can collaborate online with the use of the different collaborative tools. So also given that uh, from this, uh, also from the division of ABRA, a shout out also to the indefatigable education program supervisor of LRMBS, Ms. Roon, uh, who is listening right now, who is very much socially oriented. Number four also is that given reality, tech savvy, that the kids now, the Gen Z learners, are all tech savvy. That they were born with screens, that they were born with cell phones with them, with their gadgets with them, with their Android phones with them. Sabi nga ng isang school director sa akin, or isang principal sa akin, uh, I am a bit scared if my nursery knows how to, how to manipulate uh, the device on how to manipulate the learning management system that we have. If they are, if they if they can manage to manipulate that learning management system. And then I've said that, oh no, these kids were born with computers with them, that they were born with 
this technology with them that they were tech savvy and of course if you try to take a look many of our kids doesn't want to be away to be far away with their gadgets doesn't want to be far away with their gadgets number five of course one of the challenge for us teachers is that that our kids is not limited by the information available that in just one click they can access information that they can access all of the data online so that's that's one of the challenge so that's why for example if i also as a parent of a high schooler i am not a bit scared simply because that one of the characteristics of a gen z learner is that they are not limited by the information available that they know now how to look or how to find resources how to find for information online but it is a bit challenging for us teachers on how can we design project based learning and authentic assessments that is not only limited into lower order thinking skills so this those are the characteristics of a gen z learner that we need also to consider in our journey with them in this new normal as we transition into have into having a remote learning so the second thing that i want to share with you this evening is the education in the new normal on how education will look like i know that most of the parents do have a hard time now they do have a hard time now also to think about of what is this synchronous learning what is this asynchronous learning something that puzzles them something that uh, they are thinking about of what is this all about that most of the schools are telling them that it would be asynchronous that it would be asynchronous so most of them are asking of oh, what is this so it's good also to talk about it so the school closures if we try to take a look at the philippines that we are close that most of our schools are close across all levels and also mark twain mentioned also that i have never let my schooling interfere with my education that schooling and education are two different things that even though you are at the comfort of your home you can continue for your education that you can be educated and of course education begins at home education must continue the department of education have said so because of our of our uh, department of education secretary lunor magtolis briones let's talk about also the different flexible learning options the first flexible learning option is the face to face of course it refers to the traditional mode of conducting classes that of course without the vaccine by virtue of the deped order number 12 series of 2020 the adoption of the learning continuity plan of the department of education that there if there would be no vaccine there would be no face to face classes but also there are other options in order for us to continue so of course we have this concept of remote print learning that print refers to modular distance learning which uses printed modules for distribution only that that our schools do have a system in terms of logistics in terms of logistics on how can they deliver this learning modules so it is either through pick up or it is through either a delivery system through a courier so remote print learning also we have this concept of remote online but it's asynchronous it's online but it's asynchronous it by definition asynchronous is the use of digital materials for instruction such materials will be distributed to students via internet or a digital storage but it doesn't mean that the kids will go online all the time that they will only use online that they will only use the online modality just to access just to access the materials given to them by their teachers but also we have this concept of remote synchronous that it's it optimizes the internet connectivity and online tools to deliver instruction that's why we have this concept of flexible learning because we've become flexible we've become flexible in terms of time in terms of pace in terms of transition 
in terms also of the different processes that we deliver to our students. So it's good also that as parents, you need to ask to the school where you are going to enroll your kids of what flexible learning options they offer. That the school need to do an environmental scanning of uh, for all of its clientele of what is the capability what is the technological readiness of the clientele if the clientele do have an internet connection at home and also what type of internet connection it may be fiber if it may be a mobile data or if it may be a prepaid wi-fi and also we need the school need also to ask if what gadget is available if they have Uh, computers at home, if they have, if they only have cell phones, if they have only tablets at home. Allow me to continue. Let's talk about online distance learning. Let's try, try to differentiate of what is synchronous and what is asynchronous. Again, when we talk about asynchronous, it's can it can be done online or offline. That online asynchronous can be done online because that it the teacher uses only the online platform or the learning management system just to deliver the material to the students. And also, when we talk about asynchronous, the students can manage the pace of learning, that they will be learning on their own pace. And also, the teachers can use tools that provide automated responses, and it's less technical issues. It may occur, hence, less chances of disruption. So when we talk about, on the other hand, synchronous, It can only be done online. There is no concept of offline modality when we will be talking about synchronous. That the students follow set schedule of online lessons. The teachers can provide immediate feedback, which is one of the advantage of a synchronous of synchronous classes. That the parents, uh, that the teachers rather, can give an immediate feedback to the students. And also, there is a disadvantage. And the disadvantage of a synchronous classes of synchronous classes is that teaching and student learning can be interrupted by internet connection. Like for example, uh, that of course that our internet connectivity are unstable. So given that your internet connectivity was unstable, so therefore you cannot participate with uh, synchronous classes. And also, for example, if uh, it's brown out. It's brown out, so there's no internet connection. So how can a kid participate in his or her synchronous classes? But also, it's good to ask also the institution, the teachers, the school where you are planning to enroll your kids, to enroll your child. For example, those scenario, like for example, uh, not brown out, like for example, that there is... Uh, the internet connection is unstable, what measures that the school can extend in order for the learning will continue, in order for them to establish equity in the delivery of education. Also, your school, your choice. Of course, we need to think about, we need to choose school that promotes flexible and innovative learning programs. Flexible, flexible means that it's flexible that it delivers it delivers learning it delivers material depending on depending on your needs depending on the status that you have depending on the technological readiness that you have so it's flexible but it doesn't mean that we go flexible we forget already the concept of innovative So that's why we need to choose schools that promote flexible and innovative learning programs. You choose a school that promotes flexibility in terms of pace, in terms of place, and in terms of mode. It's also good to consider that the goal of remote learning is to support top learning priorities. That's why the Department of Education has identified already the different most essential learning competencies. But my dear Parents, it's a great misconception that we replicate the school day online, which is impossible, which is completely impossible. Like, for example, if you are used to have classes eight hours a day, or if you have classes from 7.30 until 5 in the afternoon, and then you will be 
you will replicate it online so it's not all about that it's not it's not all about remote learning because we need also to consider the attention span of our students of our child and also on how to break up the different learning tasks depending on the concept of brain breaks in the brain based education the second thing also that we need to consider in choosing a school that fit that fit our needs also that fit also the need of our children is that a school need to encourage that it encourages contact between students and faculty that there is this concept of frequent faculty to student contact is necessary in order for the school in order for the teacher to motivate students to remain engaged in the learning process so that's why that there is communications that there is an in demand communication from the school from the teachers to the parents and to the students so communication is the key as we transition to the remote learning to a flexible learning into a learning from home modality instructors need to set up communication in times of emergency immediately with learners so this helps ease any uncertainties and provides needed guidance early on and also it is also the role of the school it is also the role of the teachers to inform the learners and the parents also on how often they will communicate so that's why for example if the school will be providing already the different class schedules you need to take a look also if there are consultation period because now consultation period for the kids and for the parents as well is very important is very important also we need not to forget that even though we are into a home school concept that the students are learning from home but my dear teacher my dear students my dear teachers of course we need to strike a difference between the concept of home schooling and home based learning because home schooling not all schools is offering the concept of home school because it entails a different government recognition in order for the school to deliver home schooling we are into home based learning most of our schools are into home based learning so the concept of home based learning it doesn't mean that the school will only provide will only provide academics to the students also that it's good that even in the era of disruption schools need to provide a variety of opportunities still for students to showcase their talents that there is this concept still of student services that there is also still the concept of guidance program in the new normal so it's good also to think about schools that provides holistic student formation even in the new normal so we are in an era that the rules has changed the rules has changed the routines has changed like for example it's good to ask as parents if what is my role now in the new normal before my role is to enroll my kid to send them to school every morning but your role is maybe it's the same a little bit the same but also there are already add-ons to those roles that i will be sharing also later on as well as the rules what are the new rules now of the school that's why you need to ask the school where you are planning to enroll your kid what are your new rules now to my kid what are now your system what is now what is what do you offer or what are the things that my kid need to consider as you transition to home based learning and what are your daily routines now so it's also too good to think about this one that in a new normal a school need to have a new infrastructure infrastructure which is not a physical infrastructure an infrastructure in terms of daily schedule that you need to ask also well, what is the daily schedule of my kid given this new normal so also what are now the school rituals what is now the school or the platform what are now the specifications what are the technology specifications what are the tech requirements that uh i am needing to provide in order for my kid or in order for my child to continue as well as as we transition to the new normal there are also new systems that you need to demand you need to demand to the school that you need to ask to the school oh how attendance can be checked 
if there are also new discipline policies? And what are the new requirements? What are now the new requirements? Also, the different approaches, the new approaches, the student engagement, also the student permission. For example, if there will be retreats, for example, how guidance service will work now in the new normal, as well as also the last is the new culture on class routines, the classroom management, because that's the dilemma of most of the parents now. Like, for example, many parents are asking that, uh, for example, I cannot, I can't ask my child to sit down and then there would be online classes. How can I do it? But also on that note, it's also good to ask also our role as parents, given that scenario, given that context. Third, learn from home parenting tips. Third, I am now on the last stretch and also I will consider some questions later on. So learn from home parenting tips. Of course, we need to begin of what type of parent we are in accordance with the parenting styles of Diana Bombrin. The first, of course, the first parenting style is that if what type of parent you are if you are a if you are an authoritarian that you focus on obedience punishment over discipline and also it's good if you are an authoritative type that you create a positive relationship but even though you create a positive relationship that you still enforce rules also if you you need to ask if you are a permissive that you don't enforce rules that you will be telling, you will just simply tell yourself that kids will be kids anyway. And also if you are an, an, an involved type of parent that you provide little guidance, nurturing or attention. So you need to ask yourselves now, if what type of parent am I? Of what type of parent am I? Also, let's try to talk about some of the parenting tips that it's good that we will that we could have in the new normal. The first is that that you need to establish a flexible learning space. Anak dito ka mag-aral. That this is the learning space. That's why I've entitled my talk that from the classroom to the living room. It's not good that of course that the learning space of your kid at home is the bedroom. That it's not good but also that to establish a learning space in a living room that everyone is there. But of course, you need to think about also, baka uh, maingay, that it's noisy, but also it's good that you need to establish a flexible learning space in order for the kid to have a mindset that I am going to school, that, that the moment that I am here in my learning space, I will continue to learn, that I will continue to study. So that's the first learning tip. Anak dito ka mag -aral. Establish a learning, a flexible learning space. The second also, one of our new role as parents is to check in every morning and throughout the day. Anak, kamusta ang pag-aaral mo? What have you learned today? It's also good to ask to our kids. Uh, how you go about your lesson today? Is there something na nahihirapan ka? Is there something that you can't understand that I'm willing to help. Is there something that you need? You need some books, you need some other resources. So it's good to check in every morning and throughout the day that we set up the computer for them, you set up the internet connection for them, you set up something for them, that you clean their learning space. So check in every morning and throughout the day. So it's good also that this is our new role now as our parents to check in every morning. If before, you send them to school. Now your role is to check in every morning and throughout the day. It's also that, uh, of course, that all the, our kids will be now learning at home. It's also good that we establish a flexible time also with them. If before they wake up at 6 o'clock because they need to reach the school by 7.30. So now maybe they can uh, wake up by 7, by 7.30. But don't forget to establish still routines and schedule with our kids. Of course, we need to allow frequent brain breaks. Anak, halika muna. Halika muna rito. Kain tayo. Because in accordance with the American Academy of Pediatrics, that our kids do have a screen time limit. 
that we need to limit the screen time of our kids. Like for example, for 18 months and younger, of course, there's none. For two to five years old also, for the primary grades, it's less than an hour. So that's why it's not... Uh, It's not conducive for the primary grades to have an online class as high as four hours or five hours due to the concept of screen time. That, for example, if the teacher is not that engaging in terms of the Gen Z characteristics, the kids might got bored. So six plus and older at parental discussion. But mind you, one of the concerns also of the students, like for example, One of the concerns talaga of students now is the concept of destruction. Is the concept of destruction that uh, they are telling us, for example, they are telling me, I can't stop looking at YouTube even if I am supposed to be in the LMS. So that's one thing that we need also to address as parents. That, for example, uh, most of our kids, uh, most of the kids also, some, or some of the kids also prefer live classes. Like for example, the in mathematics class, the modeling of computation. So these are the things also that as parents we need to address. But the screen time concept is not only the screen time during synchronous classes, but also the screen time beyond the synchronous classes. That maybe uh, if uh, the synchronous classes are done, maybe the students still spend to play online games in the computer that might distress them. That might distress them. So allow frequent brain breaks, my dear parents. Also, consolidate learning at the end of the day. Anak, ano ang bagong natutunan mo ngayon? It's good to ask. That is good also to ask the kids to share something of what is new. What is that? That What is the new learning na natutunan mo? Anong nakuha mo ngayon? Hindi lang na... Alam mo na yung anak mo nag-aaral ngayon, anak, alam mo na yung anak mo ay nag-online class. Pero you're not asking naman of what he or she have learned after the day. It's good also to check like that. Anak, anong tut- bagong natutunan mo ngayon? Can you share it with me? So consolidate learning. And also encourage productive struggle. Of course, screen time. The concept of online learning is completely different in having a face-to-face classes. Like for example, if in a face-to-face classes, the kid can immediately ask a question to the teacher. But now, it would be very difficult or there would be constraints if there would be limitations. That's why they will be having a hard time, of course, as first-time online learners, that all of us are new in this scenario. So of course, we need to encourage our kids. That we need to, that we need to praise them. We need to encourage them that they can do it. Anak, alam ko kaya mo yan. Alam, alak, alam ko kaya mo yan. Of course, there are Waterloo subjects for our kids. That, for example, mathematics is their Waterloo. So, of course, we need to encourage them. Anak, alam ko kaya mo yan. And lastly, consider also passions in play. Consider also passions in play to our kids. That, for example, anak, anong gusto mong gawin sa linggo? That even though they are at home, that even though they are ho- learning at home, it's good also to ask our students, also to ask our kids of what they want to do after class. O anak, anong gusto mong kainin mamaya? Bibigyan kita. O anak, anong gusto mo? Uh, you will play computer games or you want to go out with friends or you want to have a video chat with your friends. Also, to what you want to buy a new book. So, Those are things that we need also to share with our kids, to share also with our students, which is one of our one of the parenting tips that I highly encourage that you consider also passions and play, not only brain breaks, but also you consider at the end of the weekend of what do the students want to do? What what are the things that my kids want to do? So Anak, ano ang gusto mong gawin sa linggo? Most of us are asking questions that if talagang kailangan ko pa ba talagang i-enroll yung anak ko this academic year, even though online, it's also good to ask that question. That for example, pwedeng hinto na lang siya muna 
hindi na siya mag-aral ngayon kasi of course uh, baka next year na lang siya kaya mag-aral. It's also good to ask that for example, in accordance with the data of World Bank returns to investment in education, that every additional year of schooling can be equivalent to 10% of an additional future earnings. And also another thing is that the World Bank also mentioned that each year of education reduces the risk of conflict by around 20%. That education can't wait. It will continue. And also, according to George Brookings, that the loss of learning during World War II, during World War II, had negative impact on students' lives 40 years later. 40 years later. It had a negative impact 40 years later. Also, according to the Vox CEPR policy uh, portal, the loss of information delays the recognition of both high potential and learning difficulties that it could have a long-term consequences for the child, given that they will be at home, given that they will be at home doing nothing, unlike here in school that they could still communicate, that even though they are doing a home-based learning, they have these classmates of them, that they can communicate, that they can interact. And also, according to the Alliance for Excellent Education, the schools are a vital source for meeting students' basic needs, that including food and health care, and these needs will grow as the nation absorbs the economic hardship. According to Lancelet, School routines also are important. School routines are also important that only the school can give. Uh, coping mechanisms for young people and most especially the mental health issues. The mental health issues. Like for example, that they are idle for how many months and they are not doing nothing. As I go along, as I talk to some of my friends, as I talk to some of the kids, they are now, they are excited to go to school that they are excited to go back to school even though the concept of school is that the home is the new school. So also, when school are closed, they lose an anchor in life and their symptoms could relapse if they will not go to school. And also, very important for me, very important for me, that if the kids don't go to school, Problems of domestic abuse and depreciating human capital weigh more heavily on those below and those struggling to stay above the poverty line. Domestic abuse. That uh, there is this picture that I came across that not all victims of the virus of COVID-19. And one good thing, the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines asked uh, was asked if they are into the opening of uh, classes comes August 24. And one bishop mentioned that, yes, simply because that we need also to cater and we need also to address the mental health concern of the kids that even that they are idle for how many months already doing nothing. So... That's it. Thank you for a fruitful night. I hope that I've enlightened you somehow. I've offered some tips on how can be a parent in the new normal. I hope that there will be questions that I will be answering. Questions that I will answer. So we have still time for the Q&A. How to, uh, a question from Hannah May, how to teach values at home during ECQ? It's good also that, uh, for example, teaching values, you can ask them to watch. There's a lot of value embedded videos that could be engaging for our kids. Or you can teach values through stories that they are, you tell them a story and also pictures that the kids now are all image driven, that they want to you need to give them image and then you can infuse values already for the kids. It's good. There's a lot of uh, approaches also on how to teach the kids also. 
uh, another uh, uh, from Elena Marie Joy. Congrats po. Thank you for that. Uh, what will we do if we do not know the lessons of our children? So, so science and math, senior high school po ang anak ko. Okay, good also to ask. Uh, I do not know if most of us do have textbooks still. You can review the textbooks also. That we need, that I highly encourage that schools need still to have textbooks for the students in order for us to have a reliable and uh, valid data. And of course, because of the information privacy also. And if that is the case, for example, that if you do not know the lesson, there are a lot of tutorials online that could greatly help your kids. We have this concept of open educational resources, like for example, the DepEd Commons of the Department of Education that you could review, that you could use in order for you to teach, in order for you to review, and in order for you to help your kids in coping lessons in this uh, online learning modality or in this home-based learning. And also, uh, textbooks is very important for the primary grades because it's not only all about the content, but we develop the fine motor skills of our kids. And it can only be developed through... It can only be developed through uh, holding a pencil and a paper. Uh, we'll wait for some questions. If there is still questions. We have a lot of time, Panaman, for questions. I like your accent. Very eloquent. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, how are we to involve ourselves na online po ang learning and we are not encouraged to join them? Uh, on how we are to involve ourselves na online. You can have... You can demand for parents, teachers, conferences for, uh, so, excuse me, you can demand for online parent conferences for the teachers in order for you also to track, in order also for you to track the, the progress and the development of your students. And also, if your school do have a learning management system, you can greatly involve yourself that most of the learning management systems now do have a parent account that you can track the progress of your kid if he or she is complying with what is required or if not, if he or she is attending synchronous classes or not. There are a lot of ways on how can we involve ourselves as parents in the learning of our kids in this new normal. Thank you for that question. Uh, we have this question from Mom Pandora Santos. Ask ko lang po kung papaano po ang process sa mga bata na first year pa lang of studying. Yes, it would be they would it would be a hard time for you as parents. But number one, number one tip is that establish routine and be consistent with that routine. Be consistent with that routine. That you establish a routine and number two establish or instill a mindset to the kid that he or she will be going to school. Like for example, comes August 1, you need to tell a story, you need to remind the kid that he or she will be going to school now. That you need to begin now of asking him or her to write in a paper, to hold a pencil, and to wear his or her uniform, if there is, if there is. It's also one way also of uh, preparing the kid for a first year study to be in school. Another from Mary's Fidelity. Thank you, sir. You explained it so well. How to respond to the comments of the parents who says that we will make divide the salary between the parents and the teachers since the work is divided. Uh, as I have said that we are transitioning to a new normal. And this new normal, we will be transitioning into a new infrastructure, which is an online infrastructure. And also, we need to be understanding with each other also for those parents who enroll themselves 
uh, to enroll, who enroll their kids in a private school institution, that we are in a new normal. But let's also accept the fact that we are all caught off guard, that we need to train our teachers who were not trained in having an online learning modality, on in an online learning modality, that they were not trained on how to deliver lessons online, that we need also the school need also to upgrade the technology tools of the teachers, that the school need also to upgrade the internet connection of the school in order for you to, in order for the school to cater still quality education, even though we are in the era of disruption. So that's why uh, that's the challenge for each one of us. And the value, which is very important now, is understanding, understanding, tolerance from one another. Also, from Mark Anthony Pimentel, how can we teach values to overprotective uh, parents? Uh, on that note, Mark Anthony Pimentel, on how can you teach values to overprotective uh, parents is that you need to intensify your guidance services in the new normal. That guidance services, I suppose, is not only for the students, but also on how can you intensify the parent and student partnership, that you need also to have uh, sessions with the parents in terms of parenting, in terms of their role now in the new normal. So that's one, that's my suggestion. That's my suggestion. From Andrea Lynn Ignacio, sir, are there websites or FB pages para kami naman ng mag-aral ng lessons sa mga bata or by parenting book ba in the new normal? There's a lot actually of parenting tips. But I would like to go back to what I have said. That our role as parents is only to provide a learning space, to provide a proper mindset for our kids, and to provide all of the other things that the kid need needed in order for them to have in order for them to be in this new normal, in order for them to be in this home-based learning. But it doesn't mean that it is us, our parents, will teach the content. It doesn't mean that it is us will teach the content. That's most, the, the, most of the misconceptions that we have now, that it is us, parents, who will now teach the content. It's no. It is still the teacher who will teach the content. But our role as parents is to see to it that our kids are attending his or her classes, are complying with all of the asynchronous requirements that the teacher may comply, that the, that the teacher will ask for our kids to comply. But it doesn't mean that it is us parents who will teach the content. It is still the teacher who will teach the content. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vibal Publishing House, for this uh, opportunity. I hope that uh, you've learned something from me tonight. Have a great night, everyone, and uh, keep safe. Thank you very much.